This video is sponsored by Get Magical. ChatGPT's new code interpreter now makes us even more superhuman. Like for example, you get a math problem, take a photo of it, and let's just upload it directly to ChatGPT and click on solve. And it just gives you the solution. That was only the first out of all the ones I'm gonna show you today. And if you want a compiled list of all the prompts, I'm gonna give you a link at the end. Now, let me show you the second one, analyze data. So here I am on my YouTube channel, and if I just click on download a CSV file, I can now drag this data into ChatGPT. I'll prompt it, see any trends in this data. It'll start working, you can see content, video title, views, watch time, subscribers. It started plotting some crazy graphs. Here you can see views versus estimated revenue, subscribers versus revenue, impressions versus views and it basically said uh, you get more money if you get more views thanks code interpreter prompt number three is to recommend future actions based on this data can you recommend any future actions i can take to reach my goal of 1 million subscribers this allows you to use data you have in your database to make better decisions for the future if you already have chat gpd plus click on settings and make sure to toggle the code interpreter on number four or is correlation between data. I'm going to go to Google Trends and explore ChatGPT. Now I can download this data and I can ask it, can you explain the correlation between these two CSV files? And I want to tell you a benefit of the code interpreter. And that is that it's loading all of this in a Panda database, which means that it can write way longer messages than it was ever possible to do before. Use number five, graphs and data. The prompt being create 10 visuals to represent the data. Data. And just like that, we got 10 graphs, all of them being kind of different in different ways. And you can definitely make different types of graphs if you just specify what your goal is. Number six, create an entire presentation. Again, based on this data, can you make an entire presentation for me? Here, prompting is going to be your best friend. You might say more specific things based on your goals or needs for the presentation, but at least you can turn a CSV file into a presentation. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you can actually use a tool like to turn this visually appealing. Well, as you can see, it's just writing the slides. So we don't have to do anything. And we can use all of these graphs as visual representations in the presentation. And it's just about to get crazier, but first, a word from our sponsors. This is one of the best AI tools for productivity. If you write emails, you will love this. First, we need to get the magical Chrome extension. Now just write double slash and you can write anything with AI. So here's one of the best ways to use it. I usually get the same emails again and again and I have a preset response. So I name this sponsor one, click on save. And now every time I get this email, I just write double dash sponsor one and it's there. The second way to become more productive with it is when you just want to respond no. You have these quick replies. If I click no, Magical is writing, boom. And all I gotta do is send. And if I click on custom, I can describe the reply I want. Like if I ask it to describe the problem and it will make a custom, like integrating AI into your Windows Shades company. I bet this would save you a lot of time. Go to getmagical.com and download the Chrome extension. You can also find them in the description down below. Thanks to Get Magical for sponsoring this section of the video. Now. Back to the video. Use number seven, clean data. If you don't have any data sets, you can go to kaggle.com and download a bunch of them for free. So let's download this one on Netflix movies and TV shows. I'm just gonna drag it in. The prompt is propose possible ways to clean this data and it's getting to work. Many people work every day in Excel cleaning data. So this is a huge time saver for a lot of businesses. As you can see, we got a bunch of missing values and a bunch of possible solutions. It just continues working and maybe my favorite new prompt, can you give it to me in a downloadable CSV file? Sure, you can download it using this link. You click and you see it starting to download in the bottom left corner. My mind is just blown. Use number eight, image processing. Say I put this image, here you can do a lot of things and let me show you a big prompt here, like crop this photo vertically, in this ratio, flip it 180 degrees. You can put a blue tint on top of it and add the text 
AI Andy bold and big in the center. You can do more things as well, like increase the brightness, add contrast, and a lot of different things. We can spend the entire day on it. The first thing we cropped it. The second thing we flipped it. The third thing we painted it blue. <laughs> and we added AI Andy like tiny font. <laughs> Number nine, merge images. I'm gonna upload this one and I'm asking it to merge the images. You can choose them to be side by side, blend or overlay. We're gonna do the blend one. And here we got the image blended together. Number 10, video editing. We can turn this image into a video and there's so many different prompts you can do here. The best way is just to describe it. I'm asking it to turn the last image into a video file where it's zooming and rotating for five seconds, 24 FPS. We can also make it a GIF and it gives us a download file and it's 105 megabytes. As you can see, this is the rotating video. It's not perfect, but it opens my mind to a new way of editing a video that was never able to do before. Number 11, converting. If you have a JPEG, turn it into a PNG. If you have an MP3 file, you can turn it into a WAV file or video file into a GIF. I haven't tested the limits on how different files can be created, but I haven't really found any limits. For example, I'm gonna take this PNG file. I could also make the file size smaller by asking it to. And here it's literally 209 kilobytes as a JPEG. But this one is not as impressive as number 12, make videos. The prompt is make a GIF with waves of falling green matrix letters. Use any modern font, 30 frames, 10 FPS, no talk, just go output the result as a downloadable file. And it's basically running through multiple processes to be able to create this. And in the end, we got the matrix animation and this is how it looks. This is the first example of a video generation inside of ChatGPT. And I bet that you are gonna make some crazy shit with this. Number 13, audio editing. So I'm gonna drag my voice wave in here and it sounds like this. Hey, so this is AI Andy's clone. Now, I don't have a body. Let's ask it to remove background noise. It's so crazy, it says, let's load the audio file and listen to it first to understand the nature of the noise. And the way he listens is just like numbers. Okay, he's applying high pass filter. So here is the filtered audio file as a downloadable file and, and here's the result. Hey, so this is AI Andy's clone. Now the results of this wasn't the greatest because of the way it applied the noise reduction. We have great models on how to do this free and open source. So this will be really good in just the next iteration. Number 14, understand code. Imagine you go to GitHub trending like this one where you can dump all your files and chat with it using generative AI second brain. You could upload any JS or Pi file to ChatGPT and it can tell you what it is in plain and simple English. Number 15, write code. So I asked it to make a snake game that I can play in my browser and give me a link to click to play it. And it said, I can't do that. I have to make a pie file. And just like that, it just started writing the entire game. Like this is lines of code right here. It also told me how to run it. Copy pasted it into VS code. And just like that, I have a snake game that I'm playing on my computer right now, it almost worked perfectly with just two prompts. But if it doesn't work perfect, number 16, you can analyze and optimize your code. So for example, if I take this snake.py file code and I could either copy paste the code or copy paste the file, I could ask it this very, very powerful prompt. Analyze the code for potential errors or inefficiencies. It's giving us one, two, three, four, five, six different inefficiencies that we could just say, can you add them all for us? Number 17, feature implementations. One of the most important things for any software startup is to ask for customer feedback and to create a feedback loop. For example, I ask polls all the time in my YouTube to understand my audience so I can make better videos. So if I had the snake game and I had a big list of survey questions on what my audience wants, if I had a software, I could prompt it and give it the prompt based on this data, give me a list of feature requests we could start implementing ranging from most valuable to least valuable. Now, I don't have a software or good data, but you can just imagine taking the three best
guest features and saying, can you code that for me? And bada bim, bada boom, your software is better. Number 18, a QR code for your website. The prompt is create a QR code to send people to my website, aind.ai slash prompt. So if you're on your phone right now, you can pull it out and go to my website. And that's the link where you can get all of the prompts that I've been talking about in this video about code interpreter. But that's not even the best part. Number 19, interactive 3D surface mapping. I'm gonna upload map data from Mars. I'm gonna prompt it to draw an interactive 3D surface map from this data file and output a downloadable HTML file. As you can see, we can now interact with it in our browser. Number 20, a visual word cloud. So I'm just gonna make it write the first 500 words of Romeo and Juliet and then make a word cloud. Just like that, you have love, Romeo, Verona. Number 21, detect faces and objects. People are doing amazing things on Twitter like face tracking and create more advanced video analytics, detecting objects, tracking, counting objects. To keep my promise, go to aind.ai slash prompts and see all the different prompts that I talked about in this video. Don't forget to check out Patreon down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.